Hey, everybody. Hey, Fly Tires. I got good news for you. Julie is here today. But I see zero people in the audience. So uh, I'll wait, Julia, to ask you to come on. Mm, maybe we're, maybe we got a problem. I don't see, I don't see, I see zero. <laughs> oh, five. She reminds me of some of my book signings. <laughs> Sitting there, nobody shows up. <laughs> oh, now we're up to 16. All right, I'm going to wait a little bit until some more people come in. But I hope that um, I hope that everybody's doing well. There's Roger Bird. Of course he's here. Hi, Roger. Hi, Irma. If Irma's if Irma's listening today. And Eric and William said hi. And Alejandro from Argentina. Ed from Stewartstown, PA. Andrew. Hello, Andrew. And Mac. And Shane. And another Andrew. And Rosie. From Ro Rosie from Roanoke. Boy, that's pretty cool. Rosie from Roanoke. And Rick from Colorado Springs. All right. So, Julia, why don't you pop on and say hi, because people like to see you. Please, Julia. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. <laughs> Julia's Happy to be back. Here. Surprise uh, tying on a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, sorry that we um, that we aren't... Um, that we aren't on our usual day, but um, I had I had things to do on Mondays this month, so um, we thought we you know we wanted to do some fly tying with you. So we're Hi, Roger. doing it on doing it on a Thursday. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, Julia, um, if you have any questions while I'm tying, um, because that's the best time to ask questions, not afterwards, because I don't usually. Uh, read the comments after this is done. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, that's why we like to do these things live because uh, you're able to ask your questions as I'm as I'm here and as I'm trying to to try to try to answer your questions. Feels kind of lonely here without Tim Flagler, uh, but I know I'll win today. So, yeah, I guess uh, there's things to be said for uh, doing a doing a tying on your own. Anyway, today's fly is um, you're you're actually you people who are uh, tuning in today are actually the first people in the world to see this fly. I have not shown this fly to anyone, not even my fishing buddies, not for any special reason, just because they don't ask to see my flies <laughs> when I'm fishing. Um, but um, it is a oh the Jensens are here. We I love you too, Dave and Amelia. Um, so this fly is a modification of it's called the Grey Goose Flashback, and it actually should be called the Double Tongue Grey Goose Flashback. Um, Frank Sawyer was a river keeper on the River Avon back in the 1940s and 50s, and he was um, his philosophy on flies was very pragmatic and very simple, and. He invented the pheasant tail nymph, which, um, you know, is probably one of the most popular nymphs in the world. Uh, us Americans have bastardized it pretty badly. Uh, but anyway, he tied his flies uh, all with wire. He used wire for the underbody. He used wire for the tying thread and the rib. And uh, he felt that it gave him enough weight to uh, get those flies down to the fish. Now, he was fishing slow, shallow uh, chalk streams or spring creeks in the UK. And um, in our American waters, uh, we often, uh, just weighting a fly with wire, we often can't get the flies down because our waters are typically faster and uh, deeper than, than what he was fishing. So we often, we often add weight to our flies. So um, he had another pattern called the gray goose which never became as popular as the pheasant tail. 
but it just it uses a gray goose uh, wing feather instead of uh, instead of pheasant tail for the body and the, the wing case and, and the thorax. Um, and I, I've used the gray goose a lot over the years, uh, and I decided I wanted to jazz it up a little bit, make it a little sexier, uh, and also heavier. Uh, so this is my variation of Sawyer's gray goose nymph, and it's a, a flashback uh, beaded version of the Sawyer gray goose, which is a which is a great fly. And uh, the cool thing is that anyone can get gray goose feathers. Uh, you can buy them in a fly shop if you want, but all you got to do is go to a city park. Um, geese are bound to drop some feathers. And they often drop wing feathers when they molt. And um, so you, you should have no trouble in finding some just plain old uh, gray goose feathers at, in your local park. Or if you know a hunter, a goose hunter, uh, you, they, don't, they don't have any use for the wing quills. Um, you, can, um, you can get some from them. So it's pretty easy to get a, uh, just a goose quill. And also the other thing to bear in mind is that you can use other feathers like you use pheasant tail. Um, the fibers have to be pretty long and they have to be pretty strong, but um, turkey, turkey wing quills, turkey tails, um, you know, any, any feather from a large bird uh, will, will work. Crow will work. If, you know, you can't sell crow in a fly shop because it's a migratory or um, it's a it's a songbird, but um, if you know uh, some people hunt crows, if you know any crow hunters, you could get a crow feather, or you might find one dropped in a field somewhere. Um, so you can use those kind of feathers. You don't just need to use pheasant tail, and you get a similar effect. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the the gray goose, and uh, you're going to be the first people in the world to see the gray goose double tongue flashback. So why don't we start tying? Any questions at this point? I don't see any, Julia. Do you? I don't see any questions. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to use a uh, Orvis uh, wide gap, wide gape um, tactical hook. It's got a nice short shank, and it's barbless. It's a strong hook. Um, it, it hooks and holds very well for a barbless hook. Really, really holds onto the fish well. And it comes out easily because it's barbless. Uh, this is a size 14 that I'm going to tie on today. You can tie this fly in a, in a 12, a 14, uh, a 16, or even an 18. I would, I would put one bead instead of two on a, uh, on a size 18. But when you tie this on a 14 hook, it's really a size 16 fly. You got the, you know, you got a, you got the gape and the, and the grabbing power of a 14 hook. But it's really going to be about the size of a size 16 fly because this hook shank is fairly short. So when you tie this on a 16, you really get the a size 18 nymph. So it makes it makes it nice. Okay, so um, I'm going to take the hook out of the vise and put a couple beads on it. So I am using um, two millimeter beads, black beads, which is what I like to use on a uh, on a size 14 or a 16 hook. And I'm going to grab two of them. And then I'm going to put them, I'm going to put the, uh, the first bead on, I'm going to thread it through the big hole on one side or the small hole, so that the small hole goes up against the eye. And I'm going to have to do this off camera because I can't see that close with the camera sticking in there. I'll show it to you in a minute. The hardest part of tying this fly is getting these little tiny beads on the hook. They're a little bit easier with a barbless hook. So there's one hook, there's one bead. And the small hole is toward the eye. And then I'm going to take the second bead and put it the other way so that the small hole points back towards the bend. It doesn't really matter. These beads are so small. Now I can't even pick it up. 
and I'm going to lose my beat if I'm not careful. All right, so I'm going to, again, put the second bead off camera, and then I'll put it in the close-up lens to show you how they look. Okay, here we go. So there are the beads on the hook. And I think I, I put them on opposite of the way I told you. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. These are going to be covered up anyway so it doesn't it doesn't matter um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mess with those hooks anymore or those beads anymore and the first thing you want to do is you want to just slide those beads out of the way put them back on the bend and then i am using size 12 o uh, brown thread you can use any color thread you want really with this doesn't matter you want to start your thread right up by the eye, like so. Just leave it hanging there. And then I'm going to take some sort of flashy material. Uh, this can be tinsel or crystal flash or whatever. And if it's really fine, I like to use two, uh, two pieces of it. So I'm going to take two pieces and just wet them so they cut them off and wet them so they stay together. I like this flash to be fairly subtle. You don't need a very long piece of it. In fact, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this fairly short. I don't need that much of it. And then I'm going to Try to get this over the eye as best you can. Kind of start it on the near side and let it roll right on top of the eye and right up against the eye. A few turns of thread there so that it's sticking straight up. Cut the excess off back here. Keep those beads out of the way. And then for the wing case, I'm going to take my just plain old goose feather. And I like to take, I like to take the uh, wing case from the back side of the feather just because um, I don't need long fibers for the wing case. I'm going to get rid of these. I don't need long fibers for the wing case. And uh, that way I don't use up the nicer feathers on the other side. About a hook gap, slip of uh, gray goose, and then I will tie this, trying to keep it on top of the hook shank, kind of just letting it roll on top of the hook shank as best I can, secure it. And cut it off. And then make sure those those two are, you may have to come back and make sure those two are both right up against the eye because you're not going to finish this fly at the eye. You're going to finish it at the thorax. So you can really come very close to the eye. Like so. Now, um, I'm going to slide the beads up, up against there. And you can either slide the beads up and pass your thread behind over the top, or you can whip finish just a couple turns, like a three turn whip finish, and then reattach the thread, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to secure this just so I don't. I don't like jumping. I don't like jumping the uh, the thread over the beads because 
it's a weak point. You know, it's that single piece of thread. And I don't want to bother with glue or anything. All right, so now I can slide my beads right up to the eye, like so. Those fibers split on that wing case, but that, that should come together. And then I'm going to reattach my thread behind the beads, build up a little bump to keep those beads from sliding forward. And then I'm going to pull the first pull the wing case over the top of the beads, like so. Secure it with a couple turns. Then bring the flashy material, and if you can, you know, try to get it in the center over the top. So that gives you your little kind of a split case deal, um, and, a little, and a, just a little little subtle flash very subtle and then cut this off and then bind those ends down and work your way back to around the bend a little bit so that this nymph has a little bit of a curve shape to it julia any questions so far no questions uh you no. know just a couple giggles about the bead bungle oh <laughs> the fish will never know the difference no no the no questions will... okay all right so now i'm going to go back to my wing quill and i'm going to take about four fibers four or five fibers We'll work with four and kind of line them up, cut them off, and this is going to be both your tail and your body, just this little slip of uh, gray goose feather. So I like the tail short on this fly. So I'm just going to let that those tails extend a little bit beyond the bed. And I'm going to carefully tie it in with about three nice, tight, secure turns. Like so. Well, there's your tail, and it's going to be your body. Then I'm going to take some really fine silver wire. And actually, Sawyer in his original gray goose used uh, gold wire or yellowish wire. Uh, but I like silver on this fly. I don't know why. You could use any color you want. I like this uh, extra small size of ultra wire. Sometimes hard to find. It's a lot finer than... Um, than the typical stuff you see in a fly shop, but they do sell it. Wapsy does make the extra fine wire. And I would just, this wire is so fine, I could cut it with my good scissors, just as long as you cut it back in here. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt the, the scissors, as long as you don't cut it with the tip. And what I'm gonna do is, I got the wire in this hand, what I'm going to do is use that hand to kind of pull back that body out of the way and then bind down my wire and go all the way up to the thorax and then just stick that in your material clip or somewhere where it's out of the way. And then you take your goose fibers and Tom, we have a we have an interesting question. Yeah, uh, Ken's asking if they pick up wings at a park, how do they make sure they're not introducing bugs to the tying area? Put or like, if you zip, pick, yeah, yeah put them in his put them in a Ziploc bag for a couple days. Any kind of bio material, I imagine you could do yeah. that. 
Okay. Um, they typically a, a feather just lying on the ground is probably not going to have much uh, many bugs in it. Could you know? I mean, you you could wash it with soap and water. Uh, that'll remove anything. Dry it, wash it with soap and water, dry it, and put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it isolated from the rest of your materials. I'm just cutting. Now, doesn't that look cool? Isn't that a, that a neat looking body? And then I'm going to just counter wrap, which is this way. I'm going to counter wrap to give this thing a ribbed effect and also to strengthen those goose fibers. And when I get up the thorax, because I'm counter wrapping, I like to take a couple extra turns of silver wire just because I'm, I'm counter wrapping it. So it, I always worry that it won't, won't get established in the right, in the right way. And again, use the, heavy part of your scissors catch if you got any fibers sticking out try to catch them i got a little little fiber sticking out there but it is not going to matter and then whip finish Four times, four or five times. And your flashback gray goose is done. So it's got two beads, so it's gonna it's gonna sink pretty well. Um, because it's got two tungsten beads on it, but they don't, you know, it's not super flashy, it's fairly subtle. And for imitations of small PMD nymphs, uh, bluing olive nymphs, any, any small mayfly nymph, it's a really, it's a really nice pattern. And again, it's just an alternative to the pheasant tail um, with slightly different coloration. You could use dyed, you could use dyed quills to introduce a little bit different color, but Sawyer found that the, the natural, um, the natural gray goose seemed to uh, work very well. He called this an imitation of the his pale wateries, which is like our PMD. And I'm going to cut that little thing off. It's driving me crazy. This is why you want fine pointed scissors. It's still there. It's still there, but it doesn't matter. Once I put a drop of head cement on there, I can just move that into there maybe i'll put a drop of head cement on it now or super glue or something uh let's see head cement head cement head cement and i know somebody's going to ask me could you put uv cure epoxy over that thorax yes you certainly could nobody's asked me yet i'm surprised there so anyway that is the gray goose gray goose double tongue flashback top secret fly no one's ever seen it before and uh i see a question you could freeze the feathers right yeah but freezing freezing doesn't really um Freezing doesn't kill bugs that well. I mean, they're, they're they survive the winter, so so I don't I don't think freezing is a good idea. Just wash them in soap and water and put them in a, and dry and put them in a ziploc. They'll be fine. Uh, let's see. Does the color of bead matter? I don't know. I like black because I don't want this thing terribly flashy. But um, no, probably not. And maybe another color might be even better than the black beads. But the thoraxes on these things are fairly dark, so 
Um, could use a different colored bead, definitely. Could use, you know, you could use one gold and one black or one silver and one gold. Be really fancy. I don't know. What about putting a drop of UV resin on the wing case? What did I just say? Yes, <laughs> you could. You could. You could definitely do that. Do you want me to do that? Do you want me to put a drop of UV resin on the wing case? Okay, I'll put a drop of UV resin on the wing case. Let's see how it looks. I don't normally tie them that way, but let's take a look and see. See how it looks. Okay, I gotta get my UV resin here. I'm sorry, I'm showing you guys my butt. There. So we're gonna put a drop of UV resin on the wing case just to make everybody happy. I haven't used my UV resin in a while. Hmm. Doesn't usually stick in there. Apparently my tube is clogged, so I'm just going to get my dubbing needle and stick it in there. Usually UV resin doesn't clog. But... So I'm just, I just stuck my dubbing needle into there and uh, oh, that's too much. Let's put a little bit of UV resin on top of there. I'll put a little more. I know it's getting dangerous. I don't want too much of a hump on that wing case. There. Okay. Then we'll hit it with the UV light. Now, how does that look? Everybody happy now? Does it look better? It does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Maybe I'll have to start doing that. Good idea. Any other suggestions? No other suggestions? Nobody's brave enough? Better. Okay. Rosie likes it. Good. Lovely flash. Everybody likes it better. Okay. Well, you guys, you guys just changed my secret new pattern. We're going to put UV resin on it from now on. Could you substitute turkey for goose? Absolutely. Yes. Wouldn't be a gray goose. It would be a turkey. There's an old, uh, there's an old California, uh, NIF pattern called Kate's Turkey, which, uh, uses, I think, turkey tail feather. So brown, you know, brown, uh, turkey tail feather, Turkey wing uh, quill would work. Turkey wing quill would give you a fairly light colored uh, fly. And the, the brown uh, turkey tail would give you a darker brown. So, yeah, you could absolutely. Um, Brad, I don't like, I, I wouldn't like the looks of this in a jig pattern. I want this nymph to be really slim. And I, I think a jig would look clunky. So, no. What kind of resin do you recommend? Oh, I think they're all about the same. I use the uh, I use the loon sometimes, and uh, I also use uh, Gulf, which I think is from Finland. Um, Wapsi sells this uh, Gulf Gulf resin, but uh, you know they they all seem to be roughly the same to me. I don't I don't see any of them that are that much better than others so do you like to taper the body well the the body on that's pretty tapered anyway just because the the um because of the way the thread is underneath there and the um the goose gets a little wider as you wind it because it, it it's bigger 
as you go from the tip to the to the base of the feather so it's going to have a natural taper uh let's see what else anything else any other questions julia that i missed no not that i saw i think you got them all anybody else have questions that was a fast one yeah it's 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 a simple i like i like simple flies and it's a it's a simple pattern um what are tim and i tying next Oh, we're tying an ISO parachute next month. No, I don't know what the date is. Julie, you probably it's know on it's on That's October. It's actually on a Tuesday, October Tuesday. 10th. Yep. October 10th. Yeah, we're tying mm -hmm. an ISO ISO parachute dry fly. I sneaky a parachute dry fly. Um yeah, any other questions before we uh we sign off here? We've got we've certainly got time. Um No. Simple flies are great. Don't mind losing them. Yeah, especially nymphs. Um, Ken, good good point. You know, you don't want to you don't want to spend a lot of time on your nymphs because um, you lose them. <laughs> you lose a lot of them. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, I want to want to thank you all for tuning in today on a Thursday and um, we seem to be off our Monday schedule lately just because of Tim's schedule and my schedule, but um, we'll be back October, whatever that day was 20th. Did you say Julia? 10th, 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 Tuesday, October, October Tuesday, 10th, the 10th. October 10th. We're going to tie an ISO parachute and um, those are always fun. So hope you'll tune in. So thanks everyone. And, um, Good time, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.